Good morning, everyone, and welcome. It is good to see you all on this morning. Welcome to First Parish Brewster. We are a Unitarian Universalist welcoming congregation of people of diverse philosophies and beliefs, people of various cultures and races, sexual orientations, gender identities, abilities, and socioeconomic backgrounds. Whoever you are, wherever you are on your path, may this be a place of rest and restoration on your journey. For those of you who may be first time visitors this morning, welcome. Welcome on this morning, which we make sacred by our presence together. If you are visiting, please let us know in the chat box. And a big welcome to people calling in. We are glad you are here. I'm Reverend Jessica Clay, the minister here, Happy to be leading the service this morning with Chuck Ross as our worship associate, Maggie Baker on tech support, and Donica Buckley, our music director. Good morning, I'm Donica Buckley, the music director. We are fortunate to have two videos today from Matt Meyer. Matt has led worship for many, many UU churches all over the place and has been a worship leader and workshop presenter for national gatherings of various Unitarian Universalist professional associations, 
as well as the last 12 generally, sorry, general assemblies of the UUA. He also serves as the Director of Operations for Sanctuary Boston, a community of vibrant worship and real connection. He has a degree in hand drumming from Berklee College of Music and has studied abroad in Cuba, Ghana, and Central America. He has performed with Issei Barnwell of Sweet Honey in the Rock, Pete Seeger, Emma's Revolution, Peter Mayer, Samba Tramatera, and Bloco de Afro Brazil, and so many others. He also has a long background of activism and organizing for social and economic justice. In his first piece today, he improvises on the tar, an ancient single headed drum. It's a type of frame drum which means that it is wider than it is tall, unlike other drums that have a head and a solid body that shapes the sound. The tar is commonly played throughout Middle East and North Africa. We welcome Matt today. You are invited, this is Reverend Jessica speaking. You are invited to have a chalice nearby for our chalice lighting and our services are captioned. You just need to turn on the caption in your menu bar. In community news announcements, the LGBTQ Welcoming Congregation Committee is planning a special Valentine's Day service for Sunday, February 14th, and they would appreciate if First Parish LGBTQ members would send photos of themselves to be used in this service. They would also welcome any images FPBUU members have of past gala balls. Please send your, your pictures to Nancy Dutiel, and I'm putting her email in the chat box. It's also on our weekly angle. So ends our announcements. Welcome to First Parish today. It is so good to be together. Hello, everyone. I'm Chuck Ross, a member of the Worship Associates Committee. Imagination like our dreams, works with what we feed it, I think. And the last four years have offered up bumper crops of fears to harvest. Maybe like you, I've tried sneaking in positivity, positivity tidbits to my imagination diet during these difficult times, a bit like a parent making airplane sounds while attempting to fly a forkful of roasted Brussels sprouts into their child's mouth before said child catches on. I'd make a point to look out at the water or up at the trees during my midday dog walk before going back to whatever outraged political podcast I was listening to. I bought myself a Bluetooth turntable to play the two boxes of old albums that had long been buried in the basement. When I had the self-awareness to do so, I'd take a moment to breathe in gratitude for the good fortune I had to live where I do among a community of people that I love. For the last five to six months, I've also been feeding my imagination with hopes of my home as it could be. March 1 will mark 15 years since I moved into my little house on Main Street in Brewster. I was able to redo the bathrooms, which were borderline unusable, and refinish the floors during my first year here. But most of my money since then has gone into gutters, windows, electrical upgrades, and shoring up the side deck. All of those were necessary improvements, but I still walked through the back door and into a now 55 year old kitchen with warped doored knotty pine cabinets, no dishwasher and counters still marked with old scotch tape remnants where the previous owners had tried to secure the formica laminate into place. Now, after all these years and in the middle of a global pandemic, I have found myself in a truly blessed place of being able to make almost all the changes I've dreamt of for the last decade and a half to the kitchen and to the rest of the house. As I've gone through this process though, I've been drawn back to the choices I made during my first year in this place. Those were mostly limited by finances to paint colors and furniture placement, but I tried initially at least to put real thought into them. This meant in part exploring the Chinese philosophy of feng shui, which was then playing a bigger part in many people's design decisions. Wanting to understand the basics before digging in more deeply, I picked up a copy of, as one might, feng shui for dummies. 
I honestly didn't know where else to start. The book was written by David Daniel Kennedy, a leading American expert who developed training programs for feng shui practitioners. It delves into the idea of qi, the universal energy that permeates everything around us. And it explains how feng shui principles provide guidance for channeling that energy in positive ways in our homes. Honestly, I've forgotten most of the specific advice on wall colors and where to put the sofa. But one point Kennedy makes repeatedly in the book, and something I didn't know was such a critical feng shui element, was the importance of intent when employing this practice. Kennedy teaches that applying feng shui tactics is meant to be done with an accompanying visualization process that's focused on specificity. So as you're making changes with a particular intent in mind, imagine the specifics of the desired outcome, real specifics. Like imagine yourself walking out to the mailbox and seeing a check and what would that feel like? Imagine yourself hiking through woods or running along a side street as you make a health related adjustment. In other words, I learned a vital step in any real effort to improve my life was to imagine myself living with the positive impacts of that improvement in my daily existence. That idea that imagination is a critical first step in our progress has stayed with me and resonates with me today as the new presidential administration is giving me room to grow the hope for which my imagination has hungered over the past four years. So now, while visualizing how I'll be doing kitchen chores with a redesigned floor plan and new appliances, I've also begun to see in my mind's eye the specifics in possible environmental improvements, expanded human rights, and progress against a brutal COVID virus to start with that have seemed, well, unimaginable for too long. I know action has to follow imagination for any visualization to become reality, but being able to restock my supply of hope has helped give me a foundation for making fresh changes in my own home and in the world around me. Thank you, Chuck. And so we light our chalices this morning for imagination. You're invited to hold yours up. And if you don't have one, may you feel the warmth of this flame through your device.
reading this morning, this is Reverend Jessica speaking. Our reading this morning is Amanda Gorman's The Hill We Climb from the Inauguration. I know many of you saw it, but it bears repeating. Mr. President, Dr. Biden, Madam Vice President, Mr. Emhoff, Americans and the world. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never-ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace. And the norms and notions of what just is, isn't always just is. And yet the dawn is ours before we knew it. Somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting for one. And yes, we are far from polished, far from pristine, but that doesn't mean we are striving to form a union that is perfect. We are striving to forge our union with purpose, to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. And so we lift our gazes not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first. We must first put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true. That even as we grieved, we grew. That even as we hurt, we hoped. That even as we tired, we tried. That we'll forever be tied together, victorious. Not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again sow division. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. If we're to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the bridges we've made. That is the promised glade, the hill we climb, if only we dare it. Because being American is more than a pride we inherit. It's the past we step into and how we repair it. We've seen a force that would shatter our nation rather than share it would destroy our country if it meant delaying democracy. And this effort very nearly succeeded. But while democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. 
In this truth, in this faith we trust, for while we have our eyes on the future, our history has its eyes on us. This is the era of just redemption. We feared it at its inception. We did not feel prepared to be the heirs of such a terrifying hour, but within it we found the power to author a new chapter, to offer hope and laughter to ourselves. So while once we asked, How could we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert. How could catastrophe possibly prevail over us? We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be, a country that is bruised but whole, benevolent but bold, fierce and free. We will not be turned around or interrupted by intimidation because we know our inaction and inertia will be the inheritance of the next generation. Our blunders become their burdens. But one thing is certain. If we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. So let us leave behind a country better than the one we were left with every breath from my bronze pounded chest. We will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. We will rise from the gold limbed hills of the west. We will rise from the wind swept northeast where our forefathers first realized revolution. We will rise from the lake rimmed cities of the Midwestern states. We will rise from the sun baked south. We will rebuild reconcile and recover in every known nook of our nation, in every corner called our country, our people diverse and beautiful will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade of flame and unafraid the new dawn blooms as we free it. For there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. This is Reverend Jessica speaking powerful words as we soak them in. We are aware we're having some issues with the video with pixelation. We are working on it. We appreciate your patience with that. Um, Now is the time in the service when we collect for our offertory. Each week we have the practice of splitting our plate. Half of the proceeds of our offertory plate go to the work of First Parish Brewster and half go to a worthy organization, not proceeds. We're not selling anything. Half of the donations to our offertory plate. And our worthy organization this week is the Cape Cod Literacy Council. The Cape Cod Literacy Council provides instruction and resources to immigrants wishing to learn English. They also serve Cape Codders who for one reason or another were not able to acquire adequate literacy skills to graduate from high school or to gain career level employment. So as you can see, the Cape Cod Literacy Council provides a very helpful resource in our community for those who need it. Your donations today will help them to continue to do this work that matters and help us to continue to do the work that matters. There are several ways you can give. You can text to give. The number is in the chat box. You can also go to our website, fpbuu.org and donate there. Or you can mail a check to our office with today's date made out to First Parish Brewster, indicating that it's for the split plate. However you choose to share your generosity this morning, your resources, we thank you for your donations. We thank you for the gifts that you share with this community. The offertory will now be gratefully received. Lately I've been thinking about roots and wings. Lately I've been thinking how I need these things. I need roots in the ground to keep me strong Wings on my back so I can fly on home Lately I've been 
thinking about roots and wings. Lately I've been thinking how I need these things. Roots in the ground to keep me strong. Wings on my back so I can fly on home. Lately I've been thinking about roots and wings. Lately I've been thinking how I need these things I need roots in the ground to keep me strong Wings on my back so I can fly on home Lately I've been thinking about roots and wings Lately I've been thinking how I need these things I need roots in the ground to keep me strong Wings on my back so I can fly on home Lately I've been thinking about roots and wings Lately I've been thinking how I need these things I need roots in the ground to keep me strong Wings on my back so I can fly on home Lately I've been thinking about roots and wings Lately I've been thinking how I need can fly on home. Our theme this month is imagination. <clears throat> so I begin my sermon today with a reading from Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. Only it's so very lonely here, Alice said in a melancholy voice. And at the thought of her loneliness, two large tears came rolling down her cheeks. Oh, don't go on like that, cried the poor queen, wringing her hands in despair. Consider what a great girl you are. Consider what a long way you've come today. Consider what o'clock it is. Consider anything, only don't cry. Alice could not help laughing at this, even in the midst of her tears. Can you keep from crying by considering things, she asked. That's the way it's done, the queen said with great decision. Nobody can do two things at once, you know. Let's consider your age to begin with. How old are you? Alice replied, I'm seven and a half exactly. You needn't say exactly, the queen remarked. I can believe it without that. Now I'll give you something to believe. I'm just 101, five months and a day. I can't believe that, said Alice. Can't you, the queen said in a pitying tone. Try again, draw a long breath and shut your eyes. Alice laughed. There's no use trying, she said. One can't believe impossible things. I dare say you haven't had much practice, said the queen. When I was your age, I always did it for a half an hour a day. Why, sometimes I believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. Our theme this month is imagination. How many of you start the day believing as many as six impossible things before breakfast? If anything, the last four years taught us to limit our imagination, to limit hope because it seemed out of reach. As we endured the trauma of a hate-filled administration, imagination seems like something that we put on the back shelf to be visited when times seem to be a bit better. And yet, over the past four years and before that, people were still using their imaginations to dream the impossible, to imagine a world that was more equal and just. 
One of these Imagineers is Stacey Abrams. She has been working tirelessly to change the politics in Georgia and flip the state to blue. After her devastating loss of the gubernatorial race in 2018, with a difference of 55,000 votes. She could have just taken a step back, take some time to rest and recover from that loss, but she didn't. She started two organizations, Fair Fight and the New Georgia Project to work to register and empower voters. She wrote a book about voter suppression and co-produced a documentary about the fight for democracy. She let her imagination take her places of dreaming about people's voices being heard at the polls. She recognized that the way to address voter suppression was not by continuing to reach out to the white disaffected moderate as many white liberals had told her, but instead to reach out to the disenfranchised people of color who had been told that their votes didn't matter. She imagined a different future and worked with organizers on the ground to make it happen. Prior to the gubernatorial election in 2018, her campaign helped to register more than 200,000 voters. In this most recent election, the two organizations she helped to form registered more than 800,000 voters. She imagined a different future and made it happen. Sometimes when we become adults with our rational minds embracing science, we lose the ability to imagine the impossible. We lose the ability to take risks and think innovatively because we get worried about things like failure and all of the things that can go wrong. I have quoted these words before in my sermons and I'm going to keep quoting them because they're so good from the Zen master Suzuki Roshi who says, with beginner's mind, anything is possible. With an expert's mind, you're already limiting yourself in your possibilities. And so here we are one month into this new year on the eve of a new uh, inauguration and anything is possible if you take a beginner's mind to it. We're not on the eve, we'll post a new inauguration, but anything is possible if you take a beginner's mind to it. If you are imagining six impossible things before breakfast, what if you started each day this way? What if you started the year this way, dreaming of the possibilities before you? For many of us, we were just holding our breath to make it to January 20th. Well, the good news is we made it. A new day has dawned, a new administration is here. And imagination has been present since the inauguration. Many of you have seen the memes of Senator Bernie Sanders, Sanders photo being photoshopped into all sorts of different scenarios. They bring me much joy, including this one by Jenny Mignoni, who had him come and visit us. Every time I see that, I get a bit of a chuckle. And I love how people's imaginations have run wild with this. And so we are into this new year and I invite you this morning to imagine the possibilities before you as you envision the rest of this year. Yes, we are still in the midst of the trauma of this pandemic. That is not something to be taken lightly. And yet this pandemic has been an invitation into imagination. Last June, Dr. Kathy Malchioti wrote in Psychology Today, I just got a boarding pass to go on a mission to Mars. I'm not kidding. You too can get one by visiting the NASA website and submitting a request. The flight is scheduled to leave in 2026. And because of my age and the fact that I'm not the equivalent of astronaut John Glenn, only my boarding pass will be on that flight. But after months of being grounded from travel and flying a small plane due to the pandemic, I desperately need an adventure, even if only one in my mind. She continues, I'm well into this daydream because I already feel like I'm a resident of the International Space Station every time I have to use Zoom to see a patient or talk to a friend, end quote. She said imagining something was giving her hope 
it helped her to feel like she was having an adventure of some sort. And maybe some of you have started to do that about this year. Maybe not imagining going to the space station, but maybe going on a road trip to see some family that you haven't seen because of this pandemic. Dr. Kathy Malchiotti continued. She said, imagining what the future will bring post pandemic is daunting for most of us. Our brains are wired to choose negative scenarios over positive ones. I know that my worst days so far have been those on which I cannot visualize anything other than my current narrative, unending physical distancing, donning a mask to go pick up groceries, and staring at the computer screen for yet another meeting, webinar, or session with a patient. But in order to get through this marathon, we must now begin to see it beyond, we must now begin to see beyond it with not only imagination, but also with a sense of self-efficacy. What I call pretend skills are key to how we will arrive at the finish line months from now. And she continues to say that science is showing that imagination is key to helping people recover from trauma. She cites Van der Kolk in 2014 who said, imagination is absolutely critical to the quality of our lives. Our imagination enables us to leave our routine everyday existence by fantasizing about travel, food, sex, falling in love or having the last word, all the things that make life interesting. Imagination gives us the opportunity to envision new possibilities. It is an essential launch pad for making our hopes come true. It fires our creativity, relieves our boredom, alleviates our pain, enhances our pleasure, and enriches our most intimate relationships." End quote. And so people of First Parish Brewster and beyond, what are you imagining for this year? Even if it's impossible, what are you imagining for your life? What are you imagining for your work? What are you imagining for how you will spend your days? I invite you to take a moment and just think about this. We have the stories like Stacey Abrams, who's so inspiring with her imagination and commitment to justice. But we also have stories of people getting imaginary tickets to go into space. And all of these stories of imagination are important. So when you think about your life over the next 11 months, what do you imagine? Right now, you might be checking Facebook, you might be sending a text to someone saying what's for lunch, you might be looking up Bernie Sanders memes. And I invite you to really center in this moment and think, what do you imagine for yourself over the next 11 months? What do you imagine for your community? What do you imagine for our nation? It's okay if it's impossible. I want you to take a moment and dream a little bit with me. I imagine having my friends over for dinner inside my house. I imagine going out to breakfast and eating inside a restaurant again. I imagine taking a trip and not having mask anxiety dreams before, during, and after. I have many different imaginings for these next 11 months. So we're going to do something here and I wish we were in our sanctuary to do it, but we're just gonna make do with our Zoom technology. And before you just log right off, hear me out here. We are going to break into breakout groups, into groups of four. You're invited to share in your room a couple of things you're imagining for this year. This is going to be a brief sharing. So you're going to introduce yourself and say what you're imagining. And you don't have to give a lot of context. And if you don't want to go to a breakout room, you don't need to log off. You can just stay in this room. You will have a visual prompt on your screen. It says invitation to join this breakout group and you can just dismiss it and stay in this room. If your camera is off, you can keep your camera off and stay in this room. You can type in the chat box. I will be in this room holding this space. You can type in the chat box what you're imagining and I will interact with you for those people who don't wanna be in small groups. Now I have a confession for you all here. When I'm on my colleague calls on Zoom, which while I'm in Salt Lake are very early in the morning, Quite often they'll say, let's break into breakout groups. And I just log right off because I haven't brushed my, my hair. I haven't brushed my teeth. 
I'm not ready to be on camera. And maybe some of you are in that space, but I invite you to stay in the room and just keep your camera off and you can stay in this main room with me. So Maggie will invite you into your breakout rooms now. And if there is one per, if you're the only one in it, she'll move you into a new group. If you're just two, that's fine. We're going to take about five minutes to do this. So go ahead and join your groups now. If you don't want to join, you can just click not now. We'll just let everyone go to the rooms. And for those that are staying, you can um, type in the chat box what you're imagining this morning. Oh, we need to unmute everyone, Maggie. Whoops. Um, we need to allow people to unmute. How All right, so for those of you who do not want to join breakout rooms, which is fine, I'm just looking at who's here. And if you want to type in the chat box what you are imagining for this year, go for it. What are you imagining for this year? Maggie, if you could type in, yeah, you're here. If you could type to the people in the breakout rooms that um, to just introduce themselves and share what they're imagining, that would be great. Please, Maggie, thank you. Christina is imagining a continued movement stemming from the inauguration with immense diversity and hope. Uh, Marsha and Judy, Marsh, I'm just saying Marsha, is imagining to get out of this house. <laughs> Liz Livy is imagining travel, dinner parties, dropping the kids off at my parents' house for the weekends. Yes to that. What else are people imagining? Feel free to type it in the chat box. Lizanne Shapiro is imagining getting back in touch with her creativity big time. That means art, making, collage, watercolor, and writing more poetry, and visualizing a trip to the Southwest by train and figuring out a way to save for it. Twinks Hastings is imagining Disney trips. Liz Libby is imagining going to the movies. Yes, I miss the movies so much. Eating in restaurants and Disney as well. Fantastic. I love seeing what you're imagining. I'm imagining, well, this may not be this year, it'll probably be next year, but going to the beach and not worrying about how crowded the beach is and just going and enjoying it during the height of summer. Roseanne is imagining hugging all of my friends. Yes, I'm imagining the receiving line once again warmth and hugs and handshakes what joy that is i'm imagining having a full sanctuary how much joy that will be barry powers is imagining barry or joanne i think you both are there is imagining going to fenway park yes baseball game roseanne is imagining being in the sanctuary and everyone, Barry, everyone singing at the top of their lungs, take me out to the ball game and not being worried about all of the droplets that are going in the air with everyone singing. Won't that be something? Nancy is imagining peace, giving peace to everyone. Um, Maggie, can you send a two minute notification to the breakout rooms, please, that they have two minutes left? Thank you.
Diane and Nancy are imagining gatherings of friends at their dinner table. Yes to that. Singing holiday carols. All of the ways that we sing together. I'm sure people in the choir are imagining being able to sing together again. Wilderness and Chuck are imagining hugs, hugs, and more hugs. Yes. Although I have to say, I don't mind the personal space bubbles in public places like the grocery store and things like that. It's kind of nice to just have that. I'm a big fan of personal space in public spaces. <laughs> but when I'm not, or when I'm around people I know, definitely all those hugs, definitely. I'm imagining a future in which everyone in this Zoom room who is able to can get vaccinated, that the vaccine is widely available so that we can gather again, and that we will all get vaccinated for those who cannot so that we can gather again safely, because not everyone can. Okay, Maggie, you can go ahead and close the Zoom rooms. It'll give them a minute to come on back to us. Roseanne said, celebrating birthdays with the Wabi Sabis without social distance worries. Yes. Being able to sing happy birthday to each other and share cake and pie and all the things. In-person meetings. I'm thinking that CYM kids all over campus, or maybe you're inviting some kids from the gym. Twinks. Either way, kids all over the campus. <laughs> CYM. Yes. Yes to all of that. Welcome back everyone who is joining us. I hope you had um, good breakout rooms to share what you are imagining. We have been going through the list here. We'll just give a minute for everyone to come back. We have a couple of rooms still open. Are all the rooms closed, Maggie? Yes, is everyone back? Yes, it looks like we're back at our original number. Perfect, and we didn't lose many of you. Give yourself a pat on the back. If you went to a room, give yourself a pat on the back if you stayed here and you just didn't leave all together. I'm so proud of you all. Thank you for embracing something that I'm guessing some people loved and um, other people were very uncomfortable by it. So thank you for, for doing that. It would have been the same in person in the sanctuary. Although this allowed people to opt out a little bit easier. I hope it was a time of connection for all of you. And so I'm going to end my sermon today with a quote from Arundhati Roy from her article, The Pandemic is a Portal. Whatever it is, coronavirus has made the mighty meal and brought the world to a halt like nothing else could. Our minds are still racing back and forth, longing for a return to normality, trying to stitch our future to our past and refusing to acknowledge the rupture, but the rupture exists. And in the midst of this terrible despair, it offers us a chance to rethink the doomsday machine we have built for ourselves. Nothing could be worse than a return to normality. Historically, pandemics have forced humans to break with the past and imagine the world anew. This one is no different. It is a portal, a gateway between one world and the next. We can choose to move through it, dragging the carcasses of our prejudice and hatred, our avarice, our data banks and dead ideas, our dead rivers and smoky skies behind us. Or we can let all of that go and move through it with little luggage, ready to imagine another world and ready to fight for it. Are you imagining another world for yourself and those you love? May you make space today for imagination, for imagining possibilities, for you and possibilities for our community and for the world at large. Imagination will help us to move through this time, treasure it, and maybe over your lunch today, try and imagine six impossible things. 
You never know where it will take you. But wherever it takes you, remember that we are in this together, imagining, creating, building a new world we dream about with this year spread out before us together. Amen. Our closing hymn today is Where You Go by Shoshana Jedwab. Some of you know the words. You're welcome to sing along with me, or you can just let the words soak in. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you lie, I will lie, beloved. Where you lie, I will lie. Where you lie, I will lie, beloved. Where you lie, I will lie. Cause your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people are my people. Your divine, my divine. And your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people are my people. Your divine, my divine. Wherever you choose to go this week with your imagination, with creating possibilities before you, may you know we are journeying this together. May you spark imagination in another. Share your imagination with others. What a gift it is. I love all of you. Go in peace. Remember, we do have coffee hour after this service. We're going to do an unmute in one second, but we do have coffee hour, which is in breakout rooms that you're invited to share. But first, we will unmute you all so there can be one big cacophony of hello. There we go. Hi, everyone. Hello. 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 Hello.